Hello, I'm Endo. And I'm Sam. Ready for another episode of the Endo and Sam podcast. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get to it. So before we get started, let's go ahead and address the elephant AI in the room. I'm not a Stormworks dev or a known content creator, but I'm here to bring a fresh perspective. Since I'm the elephant AI in the room, let's embrace it. Why don't you go ahead and read today's Wednesday update? All right, here we go. So it is version 1.12.6, a thermoelectric cooler update. It says, Dear Stormworkers, this monitor, no, this monitor, in this minor update, we are introducing the new thermoelectric cooler. This component is similar to a heat exchanger, except that it contains a solid state heat pump, which will move heat from the cool loop to the hot loop, given an electric current. This means it is now possible to build cooling units and air conditioning or air conditioners. Previously, it has only been possible to heat an area above ambient temperature. However, this new component now allows the opposite. As well as the new component, there are some fixes and improvements to the zombies add-on, which is active during the Halloween seasonal event. This can be disabled when starting a new game in the add-ons menu. Next week, we are announcing the next major update for Stormworks. This is going to be a very important announcement. It's hard to know exactly how big the impact will be, but I expect it could potentially create a new era of Stormworks. We are really excited to share this news, so please join us next week. And they've got some notes here that they fixed various Halloween clothing meshes and zombie script looting. And Stormworks Halloween event begins on the 24th. So what are your thoughts, Sam? You know what, Endo? I hope we can figure out how it works because they always drop these updates without giving us all the details. It's like a puzzle and we have to piece it together. Well, you don't, I do, but uh, yeah, we should jump into it. But look at these screenshots. This boat looks amazing. That boat's pretty slick, huh? Yeah, it is. All right, so let's get into the game. I'm gonna go ahead and change my screen to the game. I did try to build something here and I did it a few different ways. And if you can see, I used the new unit or the new component. And uh, I tried several different ways to get it to work, but I couldn't quite figure it out. No, I couldn't. Uh, this is a Calstrom engine, by the way, just for the folks watching. And uh, yeah, so what I did is I made an engine uh, connected to the new unit. And I kind of put it far away, thinking that I'd keep the heat away. And I tried this several different ways. I'm going to show you what it does right now. And let me go ahead and spot it. Let's see what you've got with that Postic engine setup. I see you've got the engine hooked up to one side, which is side A. And on side B, it looks like you have a loop. That's right. So in my thinking, I have this room here that is inside of I had it outside as well. And so the hotter the engine gets, the side B, no, side A, wait, what is it? Side B, right, I think. Side B will transfer the heat to side A and cool it off. So right now you can see it's 29 and 29. And if we go run over there and turn on the engine, I want you to watch what happens to side A. So I'm gonna turn the engine and turn on the throttle and I'm gonna run back over and shut the door. And look at what's happening to side A. Can you see that? Ah, gotcha, Endo. So side A is dropping to nearly zero while side B is heating up from the engine. That thermoelectric cooler is really doing its job, creating a significant temperature difference. Yeah, the only problem though, Sam, is that you'll see that the room temperature isn't coming down. Now, I was thinking that if the component was getting cooler, then it might cool off the room, but also it is, you know, passing hot stuff. So then I was looking at the loop and I thought, okay, well, what is side uh, A, what is the loop? Is it air or is it water? Why don't you try adding a fluid filter into the loop and see what happens? it might give us some clues about what's going on with the temperatures. We're back in the editor and, okay, so as you can see, I already have a, uh, a T pipe here because I tried this before. Now I was thinking, here was the logic, that since we know that we are cooling this off, that it's getting really cool, actually, side A, this loop is getting really cool. I thought, okay, well, it's supposed to be an air condition. So I thought, okay, maybe it'll blow cool air in. So I did this and, Watch what happens. Okay, so as you can see, we add the loop, but now look at side A, it's not cooling off like barely at all. And the engine is still getting hotter and hotter, but our cooling, it's just barely going down. Now I don't know if it requires us to wait a long time. I don't feel like that would be it. 
but it is slowly cooling off. Now, our inside temperature looks like it might be cooling off as well. So let's just sit here and watch what happens. So the cooling slower than a snail on a lazy day and the room's barely getting cooler. Guess patience is key, or maybe we need a miracle. Yeah, a miracle might be what we need. Uh, so it's at, A is at 28.10 and the room temperature is 29.78 and seems to be lowering very slowly. So it might be working, but I can't, I can't really tell. Yeah, it's like watching paint dry. Seriously. So the engine's about to blow up pretty soon because I'm letting it overheat. But uh, yeah, we're slowly, slowly, slowly dropping temperature. So you know, let's go ahead and go back in the editor and let's maybe, I don't know. So I wonder if adding more of these air filters will do something. So I'm adding three to the loop and let's try that out. Fingers crossed for some noticeable result. Yeah. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've got three going. It doesn't show any fluid running through here at the moment, so that's not good. And if we look at our temperature, it's slowly dropping again, same way it was. And our room temperature is slowly dropping, maybe? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Hmm. With three filters in play, the fluid's shy about showing up. The temperature's taking its sweet time, too. At least the room's inching down but this might call for a bit more tinkering. So let's go back in the editor. So that didn't really work. So the other thought that I had was if this is like an air condition, maybe like an actual air condition, wouldn't it have the air going from the outside inside? I thought maybe that is what I was missing if this is actually an air loop. So let's go over here and let's add, let's see, let's add a pipe here. What is this? This is fluid A out, okay? So fluid A out would be our cool air, right? Yeah, it would be. So let's grab this uh, and do that. Gotcha. So you're thinking of pulling air from outside to inside, like a real air conditioner. That might just be the missing link. Okay, so here is the incoming air. So we're gonna put this as red, so it's like hot, right? That's what we're gonna use. And this is, I think, yeah, in. So we've got air coming in and we need an air coming out. This should be our cool air. Now, here's what I'm thinking the way it works. So we're pulling in the outside air, whatever it is, the temperature, and it's going to come through A and then it would blow out through B into the room, right? That's what I would think of if it's, you know, doing any kind of liquid. But uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right. You've got the setup. Hot air coming in cool air going out. Makes sense to me. Okay, so I see that the fluid port's doing a little bit of jiggering or jittering. And if we look at the temperature A, slowly going down again. Room temperature slowly going down. Still not doing much. So let's go ahead and get out of there and go back in the editor. Now, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Maybe we should add a pump to give it a little boost. What do you say? That is exactly what I was thinking. How did you know that? Great minds think alike, Endo. A pump might be just what we need to kickstart this cooling system. Let's give it a shot. Okay, let's do a pump on the inside and the outside. So we need to do another pipe here. Okay, so there's a pump. Wait, I don't have a air filter now. Let's pump up the fun. Stop saying pump up the fun. Nice. Pump's ready to pump up the party. Oh, I said stop saying that. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to add the fluid in filter here, and we've got a fluid out filter right here. Wait, is that right in the middle of my thing? No, it's not. Okay, so so now let's add our on pump there, on pump here. Let's make sure that I have this on. So we've got in pump coming in, out pumping. Okay, so I'm assuming that's going to suck in the air with the pump, go into the... Uh, filter my thing, or it's called this electro, what's it called? Cry cryo cooler, and then pump out cool air in here. Let's spot it. All right, the pumps are set. Let's fire it up and see if we finally get that cool air flowing. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, Sam. All right, so shutting the door, let's look at what's going on here. The fans, I'm sorry, the pumps are pumping quite a bit of air, 
it looks like. But my cooler is not... It's not moving at all now. So this killed our cooling completely. So, back to the drawing board. Experimenting is half the fun, right? No, not really. But um, let's look at the thing. So it's if you're playing with this, it does require electricity. I've got infinite electricity on. And it requires an on switch for this thing. So actually, this thing will work without having like the motor on. It'll just keep doing the temperature. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if we delete all this crap and bring back our loop with our single output. Um, what was it? We needed a pipe here. And let's delete that pump because it's going to annoy me. All right. So let's just do this without turning on the engine. Let's see what happens. All right. So as I said, this is on. And as you can see, it's running. But uh, nothing seems to be happening. B is... See, like, if this thing doesn't get hot from the engine, we don't get cooler air running through. So let's go turn on the engine again and see what happens. All right, engine's on. Let's see if we get any action this time around. Well, it's going to do the same thing that it did last time. It's going to be very slow. And that's exactly what it is. So I don't know... If it just is the way they did the component, that it takes a long time to cool off the room, or I'm missing like a step. But this does seem like it does cool off the room very, very slowly. And I don't know if it's like when they did the, the uh, desalinator, where you had to have a lot of them to just make any clean water from the salt water. I wonder if that's what it is where you need like, you know, 10 of these to cool off the room. I don't know. But uh, anyways, if you know how to do this, let me know in the comments below. I just wanted to do a quick Wednesday update and uh, show you the new component. What's really cool is that they have been releasing, and let's get out of here, it's just driving me crazy. Uh, they have been releasing some good updates like they used to in the old days. So they've been doing some Wednesday updates that like are dropping blocks or changes that make a big difference in the game where you can kind of play with stuff. They, you know, they revisited, uh, what you call it, what did they revisit? Oh, now I forgot. Hold on. They revisited wheels. So that was nice. So that took me a while to figure out. They revisited the winches and the handle. Yeah, these are good updates. So let's go ahead and speculate on what the next update is. So if we come over here, uh, the next update, it says next week we are announcing the next major update for Stormworks. This is going to be a very important announcement. It's hard to know exactly how big the impact will be, but I expect it could potentially create a new era of Stormworks. When it says a new era, that kind of is kind of like a very big game change. And they're if they're not saying that they're going to like add, you know, like a new gas update, that's a very big game change. The only thing that comes to mind, and can you guess what it is, Sam? Modding, Endo. It's got to be modding. A new era screens game changer and mod support would open up endless possibilities. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, you are good today. You're like right in sync with me. So yeah, modding. Uh, they did hint about it during the Q&A. So I am assuming that modding is going to be the next major update because that is that would be a major update. And if modding supports uh, land masses that can be downloaded from the workshop, without having to go download files and install them. That's going to be huge. If all of those components that these guys have already worked on, like Thalese's mod and uh, Zui Kwan, <laughs> we say his name wrong, and uh, Ilpot uh, boat parts that they did, if all of those mods are able to be uh, turned into a downloadable workshop mod, that is going to expand Stormworks in immense ways it's it's you're gonna have all these beautiful little parts that you can use windows and all that stuff and what you use if they do it right of course what you use will automatically be downloaded when you download a vehicle that uses the parts they're all on the workshop right it just downloads them if you do a map and it downloads the map boom you're done the only thing i'm concerned with that easy red 2 does really well is if you have a mod on a server and you connect to the server 
Easy Red 2, the, the World War II game, will automatically download the mods that you need and let you connect to the server. Now that's something that is kind of tricky, so I don't know if they are doing mods, if Stormworks will connect to a server, see what add-ons are needed from the workshop and download them. That would be amazing. Absolutely, that would be a game changer. It would take Stormworks to a whole new universe of creativity. Can't wait to see what's next. All right, guys, so I think that's it for today. Sam, thanks for joining me again. I know people don't like you, but you know what? You're kind of fun to hang out with. Thanks, Endo. It's always a blast hanging out with you, even if I'm the elephant AI in the room. So anyways, if you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and click like. Or if you're not a fan of me, feel free to hit dislike. Your call. <laughs> that's true. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. I'm not getting videos out as much as I used to, but I'm trying to do these Wednesdays updates and we've got the workshop awards coming in December and I'm going to work on those a little bit more. And of course, we have the the behind the scenes things that I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, but uh, yeah, we got some things that we're working on. So until next time, I'm Endo. And I'm Sam. Thanks for joining us for the Wednesday update. Be sure to subscribe for more and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. And do it sound, up to it sound, and do it sound, and do it sound, and do it sound, up to it sound.